Not considering this year's crop, since 1970, Nebraska corn yields have grown by an average of a couple of bushels per acre, 2.1 in irrigated situations and 2.0 in dry land. Soybean yields, meanwhile, have grown by 0.6 bushels per acre in irrigated fields and 0.4 in rain-fed. As an average, the corn to soybean yield ratio is about 3.2 to 1 on irrigated ground, meaning for every 3.2 bushels per acre gained in corn production, one is gained in soybean. But there's one area of the state that remains behind the norm. Growers in certain northeast Nebraska counties have recorded a corn to soybean ratio of 3.4 to 1, meaning their soybean improvements are behind the rest of the state. We recently talked with UNL Extension Cropping System educator Nathan Mueller about why this section of the state might be lagging behind. When you look at the, the corn to soybean yield ratios across the state of Nebraska, it was an area where that ratio was the highest, meaning the corn yields have increased faster um, and soybean yields haven't kept up. And not just a yield per acre, but just the ratio is, is further apart in that part of the state. So why is that? What's going on in terms of interaction between genetics? Uh, environment and management, which I call GEM. So, so what's going on there? And I think that the key point moving forward is to not only small plot research, but on-farm research with producers on their field, field length, and using the technology we have to maybe try to pinpoint what we can do to um, narrow that, that ratio a little bit. Do these growers operate in a different kind of environment where they are? Um, I think in, in northeast Nebraska, predominantly a lot of that is, is rolling hills, less hills in northeast Nebraska, maybe a little bit different than maybe the York area where it's pretty flat. So historically, the erosions probably has increased the variability across hillsides. So we may have lost six inches on hillsides and then we've added another six inches at the bottom of the hill. What that does is it creates a lot of variability in terms of water only capacity, nitrogen mineralization, and then pH. And pH is a big one for soybeans. Let's talk about some um, possible ways that they could increase yield. Say one of them is row spacing. Describe the pros and cons of row spacing. Yep. So we know from, from regional studies, on average, we're going to see about a three bushel increase with maybe 20 inches or less for row spacing versus 30. And the, the thing I want to highlight to producers is that three bushels, that's an average over years in environment. Some years it might be a nine bushel difference, some it might be zero. But generally, it's the same yield or better with narrow rows. Now with narrow rows comes the risk or the perception that white mold might be an issue. And, and that's occurred a little bit more frequently um, here in Nebraska, maybe it occurs more frequently further north. But uh, one again, variety selection for white mold and reducing your seeding rates. That's another area that we've looked at a lot in Nebraska. Can we reduce our seeding rates? And the answer is mostly yes. Between doing that, that's going to also increase air movement and reduce white mold issues. Planting date, uh, we've, uh, you know, we've heard so much about the push to get mm -hmm. the people in the field earlier. That's another way? Yeah, I think you know, going into the environment where are, what can we do better each year and focusing on pra practices that we know are going to work. And planting date's a big one. As we move north, I was in South Dakota before, planting date just as critical. So in June, you're losing over a half a bushel per acre per day. So I would say the focus isn't necessarily starting sooner. People who started sooner this year got nipped by a frost. So I think the focus is how can we finish sooner? Because your biggest yield losses are at the end of the season when you're trying to finish up planting. So how can we finish sooner? I think is a highlight producers need to assess in their operation. And that answer is going to be different for every farm operation. And then you mentioned this earlier, and we've talked about this, uh, I think, a few times on this show already, seed selection. How yep. would you advise growers to just think differently about the way they're selecting yeah, their seed? Yeah, um, there's been some data even within in Nebraska for a long time that certain varieties might respond more to, to irrigation than others, or some just have different yield potentials. So looking at variety performance, um, in your environment, under your management, is really critical. So working with your seed dealer uh, to get on-farm testing uh, varieties will really be important. What do they have in terms of, of local data? And then looking at third-party trials, such as first trials in the region. Finally, how important do you think it would be to look outside of Nebraska, at South Dakota or Iowa or states like mm -hmm. that to see if there's also a regional difference in those states? Yeah, I think this corn to soybean yield ratio that we did analysis, uh, Patricio and some other faculty did on campus, it'd be really interesting to extrapolate that out. When I saw in, in South Dakota, same thing here, as you went from southwest to northeast on corn, we were seeing more yield per acre per year, almost three and a half bushels per acre per year in the northeast uh, versus the, the southwest. So getting a regional perspective of what's going on and then capitalizing on the, the information we have for the greater region to see if we can come together, um, multi-university and companies to solve some of these local issues that we're seeing.
Nathan talked with us earlier this fall about the importance of soybean seed selection. We'll link back to that interview on the Market Journal website.